Okay, in the last video before we meet on the next class to continue this, uh, now that I have some of my elements placed, got all my major elements placed, I'm going to turn my guides back on, command semicolon, and I'm going to use the crop tool to crop a little bit closer, excuse me, to my pixel space. This is because I don't need all that working space anymore. So I can save a lot of memory that way. So what was 40 by 30 inches is now more like 20 by 14, but my finished piece will still just be within that window. Now I'm going to start turning off the layers until I just have the background layers to contend with. Right? So my sketch I'm going to leave, but on top of that, I'm going to make my furthest background element, the sky, 100% opacity. And if it's not rasterized, if it's still a smart object, I'm going to go ahead and make it a rasterized layer. Next, I'm going to put my jelly bean moon on top of it. Now I get to play with the lighting and my jelly bean moon, because it was a PNG element, it actually still needs to be rasterized. So I'm going to save it. It saves a lot of memory. Now all my components are rasterized. I have one, two. For my mountains, I have three different elements, four different elements if you count internal compositing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different elements to composite together just to get my rough landscape. But it definitely meets the requirements. It has at least five elements coming together to support an original composition. Okay. So looking at the sky, looking at the bean, I want to make that bean feel more like a sun in the sky. So I click on that, on that layer, and I'm going to use what are called direct adjustments. So I go to image and adjustments. What I do not want to go is to go to layer and adjustments with what are called adjustment layers, even though you'll see the exact same options. That's because an adjustment layer will apply to everything from that layer below, and we want to directly affect the pixels within this layer. I'm always going to teach you like the most direct way to, to affect pixels. So you go to image adjustment, and we call that direct adjustment. There are three adjustments we're going to use. First is levels for the, the lights and darks, then color balance for the color temperature, and then hue saturation for big changes. So let's start with levels. I'll usually do them in this order. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So this is the histogram. We've talked about the histogram before. We used it to make like pure black and white images out of line art. And you'll notice that this histogram does not have any strong darks. And maybe I decide to goose that. Right. But really the safest one to use is just the middle ground slider, the mid-tone slider, this gray one in the middle. And I'm just going to push it to see, do I think it looks better on that sky, if I'm going to believe this as something like in the atmosphere, as being brighter or being darker? And I'm just going to move it a little bit brighter. Okay. That's levels. There are other ways to use levels. If I do image adjustment levels, and I might use this for other ones, you can also limit the highlights. If I thought it was just too bright, instead of just darkening, I can also limit like the lightest light that's there. I can make the lightest light a 50% gray. And I can also limit the shadows. And that's really going to soften it into the atmosphere, right? Say that the darkest shadow is, is like a 70% gray. And maybe that's useful in this case. Next, image adjustments. Color balance. This is the temperature of the lighting. And you'll see you have the options for 
tonal balance on the shadows, on the midtones, and on the highlights. I always start on the midtones, and you just play with these going back and forth a little bit. I don't need more green. I think I do need more magenta to make it kind of match the color space of that sky a little bit better. And of course, magenta and green are opposites. So the more magenta I add, the less green there is. But maybe I want a little bit more red in it and a little less cyan, right? So I kind of find on that side of the slider what makes sense. Maybe I want a little bit more yellow, I think, in this case. Less blue. Now I go to shadows, and I'll usually go on the cooler side. Like I'm going to enhance the blue a little bit, enhance the cyan a little bit, maybe enhance the magenta a little bit. So it's starting to look more and more like a moon, not so much like a sun. And now in the highlights, I'm going to goose the warms, but not too much because then you'll lose pixel content. Push it towards yellow, push it towards red, push it towards magenta. And then those shadows seem a little strong. Maybe I'll knock that back a little bit. Don't need those blue shadows after all. And that's really starting to feel like it's in that atmosphere. Now those are all direct adjustments. So I changed those pixels directly. But if you go in your history, you can see what happened before you did levels and color balance. And it was like this. So you just want to make direct adjustment decisions that make you happier with how they blend together and not less happy. We still need to like play with edges and do kind of refinements, but that will be after we do these color adjustments. I can also adjust the color of the sky with those same adjustments. You really shouldn't take any, any resource you found just as is. So I'm going to maybe make it a little bit deeper in its midtones. Maybe limit its shadows a little bit. Then I'm going to go, that's levels. Then I'm going to go to color balance. And I can really change how much pink is in that sky. I want it to look like cotton candy though, so I can't lose all the pink. Supposed to be cotton candy skies. And that's in fact the prompt I use to get this. But color balance can be very, very helpful. There we go. I like that. All right, and then you can always check your history. So that's before I did any changes to the sky. That's after. All right. And then the last one is hue saturation. And I'm going to use hue saturation on the bean. So that's the third adjustment. So I'm on the, the watermelon flavored jelly bean. I go to image adjustment and I'm going to go to hue saturation. So levels, color balance, and hue saturation. And this is if I just don't want it to be a green bean at all. I can change its whole hue on this slider, and then I can play with its intensity. Woo. Now the trick is I still want it to look like a jelly bean, so I can't make it too crazy. I can also play with lightening it or darkening it, but that's better handled through levels. Yeah, and then you can always use Command J to toggle it and see if that helps. Helps a little bit, but I think I overdid it. So let me do it again. And you can even go back, like in levels. Maybe I want to limit that highlight a little bit more. Limit the shadows. And then go to color. And this will be the last thing. Now you just go through your layers and you play with these adjustments and you'll be amazed at how much it helps everything kind of sit together. And so I'll go over that 
again at the beginning of next class. So I'm going to save my work. Next would come the mountains at full opacity and play with their colors to kind of match that setting I'm, I'm setting up. All right. Thank you, guys. I will see you.